Dear friends, a hearty welcome to the third Sunday of the Advent. We call it Gaudate Sunday, a Latin word which gives us the meaning of being happy or to rejoice. I would like to invite you all to reflect on the three words joy, happiness and agony or sorrow. Though rejoice is the key word, happiness and sorrow are intertwined with the word joy or rejoice. Joy is a state, a consistent condition and it is more internal and comes from within. Happiness is very much influenced by the biological desires and the influences and the life situations, the intentional relationships that we encourage and entertain. The other facet is agony and sorrow. When we lack joy and happiness, we end up in distress, misery, and pain. St. Paul invites all of us to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice for He is here among us. Rejoice because you acknowledge His presence in your life. Angel Gabriel tells Mary not to be afraid for Jesus who is to come will be the great joy of mankind. The giver of joy is to be born within us today. Let us also see what are those moments where we feel joyful. When you do your work with all your dedication and honesty, you have joy within you. When you give seeking nothing, when you are charitable, seeking no name or identity or for laurels, you are joyful. When you love with all your heart, and with all your honesty and faithfulness, you have joy. You have a sincere earning of the labor that you give in your profession, gives you joy. When you fulfill your responsibilities with no pride and arrogance, you have joy. When you are obedient to the law of God and exhibit that love to the neighbor, you are joyful. And we often fail to know the thread line between joy and happiness, we fall into sorrow. This discernment and distinction is the challenge and struggle today. Let us see the second element we are talking about, happiness. As we said, it is biological and it is external, coming from outside, are the social environment, the clothing, ornament, the physical beauty, browsing or watching pornography and the sexual talk that we entertain and the charts that we do for pleasure are all biological which gives a temporary satisfaction and life situations are another moments of happiness like power that does not last for longer and the attention and praise that we receive from everybody and around which does not last longer because people who praise you may find someone else and begin to admire them. Even this do not last for long. And the selfies that we all take and post on Facebook and Instagram last few days and we keep changing again and again the profiles. Inconsistent with our own admiration to one's own self. Another aspect of happiness we find through the intentional relationships namely building up relationships with the wrong notion such as social status, identity, sex, money, profit, luxury, etc. And we approach people with gifts and various persuasive means and with a trap to gain something. It is purely selfish and it does not last longer. And this is the moment we need to know what our thrust is. Is it the joy that gives you a lasting satisfaction or the happiness that gives you momentary pleasure. And what is it, the agony or the sorrow or the pain we are talking about? If we have to realize the rejoicing aspect, we do have to give time to see these areas of me and in my life. The agony that I go through, the suffering that I have and the pain that I often come across. What is this sorrow is all about or the agony is all about? We see the agony of the Lord in the Garden Gethsemane. 
to please God and to do the will of God, we got to take risk and we got to take the challenge and we got to walk through the narrow path. A challenge to put on the risk for the sake of being obedient to the best. And the laws of loved ones do give us sorrow. Jesus himself is seen weeping at the death of Lazarus. And the denial of our own beloved causes us sorrow. Peter apostles, even Judas with a fake kiss denied Jesus and he was left alone on the Calvary. We do have these sorrowful moments when we love and when we are deceived, when we are betrayed and when we are not accepted with all what we are to them. And we read, he has come to his own and his own denied him. All his miracles have gone futile in his own homeland. And we do turn sorrowful when we are misjudged and when we are wrongly cornered. And we know Jesus was brought to the earthly authorities unjustly and judged unethically. We do suffer due to family issues or misunderstandings and financial struggles that we come across and the health concerns that matter a lot and marital relationships among the couple that create chaos and cause suffering and distance. What are we to do to be joyful today amidst all these circumstances that we come across? To be joyful, to be happy, suffer. We read Paul writing to Philippians chapter 4 verse from 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God. Jesus found joy in giving peace to the minds and hearts and let us imitate the same. May Jesus not only deliver us from our physical oppression and pain but from spiritual, emotional and mental bondage that has damaged our bond with God with one another. We have a text from Thessalonians chapter 5 verses from 16 to 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances for this God, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. As Mary thanked and praised God after the role of being mother given to her, we see Mary through her Magnificat, praising God for the role that she received to be the mother of God. A role which is not an easy task, rather a tough, a challenging and a painful one. And she did go through the sufferings despite the great honor to be the mother of God. Let us realize suffering is the gateway to be joyful. We have from the letter to the Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Let us identify our adherences and the moments towards money and other pleasure oriented goals and alter them to honor God for the vision of God through us. Let us all understand the agony or the suffering are often caused not by the enemy but our loved ones or for the sake of the one whom we love. Jesus took up the suffering and the agony for he loved us and he gave himself for us fully. Jesus was with the mission of the Father and with the agonizing experiences throughout his three-year public ministry always on the toes and the edge of the bench and had no rest and no place to lay. His joy was in accomplishing the will of the Father. Let us ask ourselves the question, where does joy lie in my life? Wishing you a joyful week, riding over the happiness, walking through the sorrowful moments. God bless you all.